Once again, we want to welcome you to our Sunday School Podcast. This is Pastor Nick Bueller, and uh, today our lesson is on from the book of Acts. This is chapter 12, The Tipping Point of Prayer. Empowered for a global mission, a missionary look at the book of Acts is one common or one book that we used as a resource, and also the Spirit of God and Mission, a vocational commentary on the book of Acts, both by Denzel Miller. You can load these books and many other of the author's books uh, from this website, decadeofpentecost.org, and you can download them for free or you can order them online in many places. Also, I use this book here, Acts, a commentary uh, by Stanley M. Horton, and I also used uh, for this lesson extensively some from the Full Life Bible Commentary. Lesson 12, chapter 12, the tipping point of prayer, Acts 12, 1 through 25, starting with verse 1. It was at about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this pleased Uh, the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the Feast of Unleavened Bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison, handing him over to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. That would be 16 soldiers that he was locked up with, guarding him. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. Why did Herod persecute the church? I think this has a common thread with what the church is going through today and has gone through many times. From the Full Life Bible Commentary, it says, He constantly sought the favor of the Jews and presented himself as a devotee of their religion, though Herod, the Herod family, were non-Jews from Idumea. Aware that Jewish opinion was against the church, Agrippa took steps to persecute the believers to enhance his popularity. The support that Agrippa receives from the populace encourages him to press forward in his actions against the other apostles. So he has Peter arrested, clearly intending to do to him what he has done to James. Evidently, Agrippa is seeking to destroy the Jerusalem church by beheading its leaders. Note, it is the same today. Why is the church shuttered, but things like a pot store, a liquor store, a tobacco store are allowed to stay open? It's because certain governors and rulers would rather curry favor with the enemies of the church than apply the law in an equitable way. Those that um, are maybe have an agenda that is more progressive and anti-Christian, I believe that these leaders want to curry favor with that group or a certain constituency, And that's why they're doing that. And it is the same as in the book of Acts as it is today. Here is the obvious question of this passage. Why James and not Peter? Why did God rescue Peter but not James? God allowed James, the brother of John, according to Matthew 4.21, to die, yet he sent an angel to rescue Peter. That James should die while Peter lived for further ministry is the mysterious way of God with his people. James had the honor of being the first apostle to meet a martyr's death. He died as the Lord had done for the cause of God, according to Mark 10, 36 through 39. This was by Don Stamps from the Full Life Study Bible. First, just this point here, our life is a sermon for all to see. Hebrews 11.4, by faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as a righteous man when God spoke well of his offerings. 
and by faith he still speaks even though he is dead. Sometimes we speak loudest by how we live. Then there is what I call a spiritual death. Our faith speaks loudest and accomplishes more by how we die. Peter followed him, the angel out of prison. We're going to talk about this in just a moment. But this word follow here is the same word that Jesus said when uh, he told his disciples, pick up your cross and follow me. It means to accompany, go along with, go the same way with, follow one who proceeds. A is in union with, and deliothos is a road. Akolotheo is being on the same roadway with someone. Since the word was used for soldiers, servants, and pupils, it can be easily transferred to the life of the Christian. In, in 78 gospel occurrences of this word, it is used 77 times of following Christ. Metaphorically, it is used for discipleship. Pick up your cross and follow Jesus. James and John were two of Jesus' original 12 disciples. They had asked Jesus, remember this from our study in the book of Mark, for special recognition in his kingdom. The other 10 uh, disciples were very angry, upset, jealous. Jesus had said that to be a part of the kingdom would mean suffering with him. He asked them, are you willing to drink of the same cup? Mark 10, 38 and 39. James and John did indeed suffer. Herod executed James, and later John was exiled in, John, in Revelation 1.9. What can we learn about this, about God? So let's get in, and I'm going to read a lengthy part of this chapter, and then I'm going to go back, and I'm going to cover the first two points of this lesson so, starting with verse 5, Acts chapter 12. So, Peter was kept in prison, but the church was, notice this, earnestly praying to God for him. Verse 6 through 7, the night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains, and sentries stood guard at the entrance. Remember, there were 16 soldiers guarding him. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said, and the chains fell off Peter's wrist. If I felt like I was going to be executed the next day, I would have a hard time sleeping. But this, is, this was, it just speaks of the peace that Peter had in his heart. And I believe that God can give us that heart, that peace. Verse 8 through 10, Then the angel said to him, Put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me. Remember that word again. It's the same word that Jesus said. The angel told him, Peter followed him out of the prison, but he had no idea what, what, what the angel was going was doing and was, and was really happening. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly... The angel left him. Verse 11, Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. Verse 12 through 14, When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. 
This John, also called Mark, or John, or John Mark, is also the one who wrote the Gospel of Mark. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and the servant girl named Rhoda came to answer the door. And Rhoda means rose. And when she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed, she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. Verse 15, you're out of your mind, they told her. When she kept insisting that it was so, they said it must be his angel. Notice, Peter had an angel. Verse 16 and 17, but keep Peter kept knocking, and when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the brothers about this, he said, and then he left for another place. You might notice that this is the last time Peter's name is written in the book of Acts. From now on, the primary focus goes on Saul, and we'll find out in the next chapter that he starts going by Paul, his Gentile name, which means kind of a nickname, Little. Here's point number one. Prayer initiates the intercessory angel. Revelation 8, 3 through 5, another angel who had a golden censer came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense to offer with the prayers of all the saints on the golden altar before the throne. The smoke of the incense, together with the prayers of the saints, went up before God from the angel's hand. And then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and hurled it on the earth. And there came peals of thunder, rumblings, flashes of lightning, and an earthquake. From the New Bible Commentary, it explains it. When the bowl is filled, the answer is spilled. If you read this chapter, verse 1 talks about there was a silence in heaven occurred. In light of verse 3 and through 4, it is likely that it was in, to enable the prayers of the saints to be heard. In the Talmud, seven heavens are distinguished. In the fifth heaven, there are companies of ministering angels who utter songs by night and are silent by day for the sake of Israel's glory. As in, they are silent in order that the praises of Israel may come before God. We have, read in, uh, we have read in chapters 4 and 5 the exultant worship of the angelic companies. Here, heaven is silenced in order that the cries for deliverance from the suffering Christian on earth may be heard. Verses 3 and 4, incense offered with the prayers of all the saints serves to make them acceptable before God. They must be cleansed, uh, cleansed from all taint of selfishness and sin. And then verse 5, their prayers are answered. The fire that burned the incense is thrown to the earth and becomes a means of judgment. The uh, there, there follow the phenomena that indicates that the Lord comes and the kingdom of God is established in power. Uh, see uh, chapter 11, verse 19, consequent to the seventh trumpet, and, and uh, chapter 16, verse 18, following the seventh cup of God's wrath. And that is from the New Bible Commentary. Under this first point, which is our number one, is prayer initiates the intercessory angel. We have an intercessory angel that hears our prayers, and when that bowl gets full enough, the prayer, the answer to that prayer is sent. Earnest prayer, letter A, earnest prayer is the tipping point. Notice in verse 5, so Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. Yet the early church, 
live by the conviction that the prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective, James 5, 16. And they prayed intensely and steadily over Peter's situation, and their prayer was soon answered. The New Testament church often engaged in prolonged corporate prayer. God intends his people to gather together for meaningful, enduring prayer. Note that Jesus' words, he said, my house will be called a house of prayer. This is the words of Don Stamp taken from the Full Life Study Bible. Constantly in prayer. Note, preaching, teaching, singing, music, and technology will not bring the power and the manifestation of the Holy Spirit without prayer. New Testament prayer where believers join together constantly in prayer. Letter B under the on, on number one, unceasing prayer is a key to deliverance. Unceasing prayer is a key to deliverance. Herod's family is representative of the constant onslaught by Satan upon the saints and the kingdom of God. Saints must respond with unceasing, earnest prayer. In this day, in this age, we need to pray more than we've ever had before. Don't be surprised. Notice this. Don't be surprised by the speed at which the answer comes after earnest prayer. Ironically, the greatest barrier for Peter was trying to get Rhoda to open the door to Mary's home, the mother of John Mark. It's, it is kind of ironic. Here they are. They are just praying and storming the gates of heaven and asking that, that God would spare Peter's life and set him free. And he is set free. And they are totally surprised when it happens. You would be surprised if we would earnestly pray. We will be dis surprised by how fast God will answer our prayers. Point number two, prayer activates the guardian angel. Acts twelve eleven. then Peter came to himself. Now I know without a doubt that the Lord sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were anticipating. I had a friend, Fred Medina. He was a powerful evangelist, but Fred Medina was an evangelist who had a powerful testimony of how he came to Jesus. Before he came to Christ, he was a drug dealer, but his saving grace was a praying wife. During a drug deal gone wrong, he was made to drive out into the rice fields on a levee, then shot three times in the back of the head, and his body was thrown into a drainage ditch. And as the spirit left his body, the awful abyss of hell opened up, and then God spoke over him a prophetic word, and he, he came to life, and an angel lifted him up, from the drain ditch to the levee. He was saved, filled with the Holy Spirit, and his life spared because of the grace of a praying wife. Not because of his sinful ways, but because of his praying wife. He had to have reconstructive surgery, and, and uh, he almost died on the life flight when, he, he was, uh, when they found him. Um, yeah, he had to have reconstructive surgery because as the bullets went through his head, it shattered his jaw and another his eye socket. And he lived to preach the gospel and serve the Lord. Letter A, our angel represents us before God. Jesus said in Matthew 18.10, See that you do not look down on one of these little ones, for I tell you that their angels in heaven always see the face of my Father in heaven. Jesus is making intercession for us, according to Romans 8.34. But each of us has an angel. An angel means a messenger that represents us before, the, for, before Father God. 
and these representatives are effective and motivated by earnest prayer. This guarding, if there is any, may be similar to what Jacob described as the angel who had delivered me from all harm. Genesis 48, 16. And this, uh, if this expresses a belief in a given angel accompanying him and caring for him, this was taken from the hard sayings of the Bible. Guardian angels that rescue. Daniel had two instances of rescuing guardian angels. Then Nebuchadnezzar said, Praise be to the God, and he was talking about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, who has sent his angel and rescued his servants. They trusted in him and defied the king's command, and they were willing to give up their lives rather than serve and worship any god except their own. Who has sent his angels and rescued his servants? You remember the story when the three Hebrew children were thrown into the fiery furnace and they were delivered. Also, Daniel in the lion's den. My God sent his angel and he shut the mouths of the lions. They have not hurt me because I was found innocent in his sight, nor have I ever done anything wrong before you, O king. Letter B, our angel can protect us from harm. It doesn't appear to be a continuous but momentary deliverance as with Jacob. But note that Daniel had a prayer covering, praying three times a day in Daniel 6.10. Our protection may be contingent upon our prayer covering. What does this say about ministry? Acts 12, 18 through 19, the rest of the chapter. In the morning, there was no small commotion among the soldiers as to what had become of Peter. After Herod had a thorough search made for him and did not find him, he cross-examined the guards and ordered that they be executed. Verse 19 through 20. Then Herod went from Judea to Caesarea and stayed there a while. He had been quarreling with the people of Tyre and Sidon. They now joined together and sought an audience with him, having secured the support of Blastus, a trusted personal servant of the king. They asked for peace because they depended on the king's country for their food supply. Verse 21. On the appointed day, Herod, wearing his royal robes, sat on his throne. And this word throne is the one that's used in the book of Revelation and, and, talk, and also in Corinthians talks about the bema, the throne, the bema judgment of the believers. He sat on his throne and delivered a public address to the people. They shouted, this is the voice of a God, not a man. Immediately because Herod did not give praise to God, an angel of the Lord struck him down and was eaten by worms. So who was this Herod? God has vindicated Peter. The Full Life Bible Commentary writes uh, comments on this. Luke continues the story with further proof of divine vindication in the death of Agrippa. Uh, he's the great, he's the grandson of Herod the Great. The king goes to Caesarea to meet with a delegation from Tyre and Sidon. At the time, antagonism developed between Agrippa and the people of the two cities. This is the Herod that the Bible is talking about, Herod Agrippa. Luke gives no explanation to, for their dispute, but it seems to have been an economic dispute. The cities of Tyre and Sidon depended upon the grain fields of Judea for much of their food. Apparently, Agrippa diverted grain exports destined for Tyre and Sidon to Caesarea, thereby diminishing their food supply. 
Which brings us to our point number three. Prayer actuates an avenging angel. Luke 1.52, it was prophesied over Jesus at his birth. He has brought down rulers from their thrones, but has lifted up the humble. Letter A, praying saints, bring down defiant rulers. Luke explicitly states that an angel of the Lord struck him down and bluntly explains he was eaten by worms and died. To eat and be eaten by worms is a characteristic way of ancient writers to describe a painful death resulting from d- divine judgment. And uh, as you can see, it's a, it's a quote uh, from the Maccabean writings and Josephus from antiqu- Antiquities. The death of Agrippa I uh, reminds us the death of Ananias and Sapphira. Like that couple, Agrippa shows disrespect for God and is struck dead. He is not satisfied. Notice that Agrippa was not satisfied to oppose God, but he completes with him or competes with him by claiming divine honors. The fatal mistake of this arrogant tyrant is that he did not give praise to God couple of points about this. We live in a day and an age when governors and rulers discriminate against the saints and defy the God of heaven. But there, here is the key. It is the cry of the saints that move God to send aven- avenging angels. I believe that we need to pray. Pray like we've never prayed before. We need to pray. And I know that God will send his avenging angels. Letter B, Jesus opposes the proud and graces the humble. As a ruler, he is subject to the supreme ruler of the universe. His abuse of power and arrogance bring divine wrath on him consistent with what had been predicted in Luke 152. God's swift judgment brings him low. It was prophesied that Jesus would, and he does, bring down arrogant rulers. Point number two under letter B is just as, just as important, Jesus elevates the humble. 1 Peter 5.5. 5. So in prayer, humble yourself before the Lord. God gives grace to the humble, but he opposes the proud. The last two verses of this chapter, Acts 12, 24, and 25. But the word of God continued to increase and spread. Verse 25, when Barnabas and Saul had finished their mission, They returned from Jerusalem, taking with them John, also called Mark. Our lack of prayer stops God's word. When we face difficulties in fulfilling the Great Commission, we should turn to God in earnest prayer. Through prayer, we can tap into the miracle-working power of God it is also through prayer that we receive strength and guidance guidance for the work ahead. If we will seek God's face and remain committed to his mission, we too can expect to see the word of God increase and spread wherever we are ministering. This is a quote from Denny Miller's book, Commentary on Acts couple of points here. Letter A, the gospel still advances. Notice the verse 24. Herod Agrippa boldly persecuted the church to stop the gospel. But you know what? But still the kingdom of God advances. It takes more than just a, a martyrdom to, to stop the church. The only thing that can really stop the church 
is when we stop depending upon the Holy Spirit, when we stop crying out to the Lord, when we stop praying, when we stop crying out to God. Letter B, notice they complete the mission as Barnabas and Saul did. We need to complete the mission as Barnabas and Saul did. Even in great persecution and martyrdom of an apostle didn't stop church business. The delivery of a relief offering for the Jerusalem church continued on. And you remember that in the previous chapter, Agabus got up and prophesied that there would be a famine and and the church in Antioch collected funds to relieve the church in Jerusalem, the mother church. Today is the same oh, with uh, at at this recording a worldwide pandemic and persecution from leaders should not stop the mission of the church. Let me repeat that again. Today is the same a worldwide pandemic and persecution from leaders should not stop the mission of the church, but the word of God continued to increase and spread. What is the Holy Spirit saying to you? I believe that he's calling us to pray. And he's calling us to pray. Pray for our, pray for our nation. Pray for our uh, leaders. Pray that God would soften their hearts and speak to them. And we need to pray also that uh, pray for our churches. Pray for uh, that that uh, as these as our economy begins it begins to open and our churches begin to open, pray that this next Sunday on Pentecost Sunday that we would have a Pentecost 2.0 that the Spirit of God would fall upon the churches and that there would be a great and a mighty move of the Holy Spirit. So we are asking right now that uh, just that God would just call us to prayer and move on this land. So let me pray for you. Lord, we just ask that as we studied this lesson, God, Lord, we know that there is an intercessory angel up there, that, Lord, our prayers go up, and it seems that it fills a bowl, and that that bowl hits that tipping point that it's full. The angel releases the answer and throws it down to earth. And God, it activates our guardian angel. Lord, we pray that you would cover us. And Lord, uh, with with your blood and keep us safe, oh God. And Lord, send your angels to minister unto us, the heirs of salvation. And Father, I pray also, God, that Lord, uh, in times of persecution, Lord, God, that you would send an avenging angel, oh God, just like you did with Peter, And you avenged Peter and you avenged James, Lord, by an angel striking Herod Agrippa the first and causing him to die. And Lord, in the same way, God, we're not praying that you strike anybody dead, God. But Lord, what we are praying is uh, bring us relief from the persecution and the Christians around the world, Lord, We just ask that you would uh, bring relief to them, God. And Lord, I ask that you would call your church to pray, earnest prayer, constant prayer, oh God. Lord, that we might see a great move of your Holy Spirit, that we might see a tremendous advancement of the kingdom of God on earth here and now. We ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you, and we hope to see you soon.